crazy day. So much stuff to see. You wouldn't think being here right after being at NAMM just a few months ago, there'd be that much new stuff. There's that much new stuff. I get asked pretty regularly leading up to shows like NAMM, NAB, Infocom, uh, AES especially, it's coming up this month, whether or not I think going to trade shows is worth it. And I think folks want to know what it's like, what to expect, especially before forking over a bunch of money for travel and hotels and everything else, often at like premium destinations. You gotta go to New York City for AES, uh, then you're in Orlando or Vegas for some of the other shows, and Anaheim, California obviously isn't cheap either. So from a live sound perspective, uh, what do you get out of it and who should go? Is it worthwhile for freelancers? That's something I get asked a lot. A lot of who I see at these shows and who is able to go to these shows are obviously folks that work for institutions, houses of worship, uh, schools, things like that, where they're sent from their organization to go to the show for either a specific reason or just generally. Now, I think the misconception might be that they're all about the trade show floor. Obviously, you see tons of pictures from people like me and other other folks on social media and from the manufacturers, their booths are a big deal. They spend a lot of money and a lot of time getting those right and making their new products look as good as they can. And that's a lot of fun. Walking around the trade show floor is a ton of fun, but it's hard to justify. If that's all you're going for, the kind of money you spend, uh, especially if you don't live near one of these places, it would be really hard to justify if all you did was walk around the trade show floor and look at the new gear. Where the real value comes in is the unique uh, experience of each one of these shows, of how much stuff you have jammed into one place. Even if you only go for a day, like you're seeing in this video, there's an absolute ton of opportunities to listen to things, to hear things being demoed and used for real. NAM definitely has a different context to those kind of situations and they have way more live performances just around the show where you'll see a band playing on a stage entirely done up with uh, Nexo and Yamaha gear. And that's kind of cool. And I think that's just the nature of it being a bigger show, a longer show, but getting to see and hear so many different things, things that you may have only ever heard about or read about before, uh, you know, secondhand, different line arrays that you may have heard at concerts, uh, but you weren't quite sure which model they were using or things like that. You can walk down a hallway at these shows and hear one after another, after another, after another. So if you are a school or a house of worship or a sound company that's looking to invest in something different and you really wanna have a chance to listen to all these things, I spent most of the day today actually listening to speakers in different demo rooms and hearing entire product ranges. Didn't shoot a whole lot of video in there. All the rooms are dark. It wouldn't translate on uh, a camera microphone anyway, but really interesting day to hear and see and talk to a lot of folks about what they're doing. Today I got to hear Dan Lee, Community, uh, Meyer, Nexo, uh, and a couple others that I'm probably not remembering as well. And there's some more tomorrow. There's plenty more here than I will have time to see. Each one of these demo rooms can be 30 minutes to an hour, but you typically get at least 30 minutes to listen, different sources. Some uh, demo rooms have live musicians, some uh, it's just tracks. Uh, there's some talking, there's music, there's a whole range of stuff. So no matter what you're looking to buy speakers for, this is a really unique uh, opportunity to come and actually hear them all right next to each other in different rooms, but one room right next to the other. Uh, it's a lot of fun today. So tomorrow's going to be meetings. Tomorrow we're gonna meet with Carl Winkler, uh, Electrosonics. And then after that, tomorrow night, we have the Geek Out with controlgeek.net and John Huntington. And we're going off site to go and hear some folks geek out about some really technical stuff that's gonna be way above my head right from the start, but it's gonna be a lot of fun to hopefully learn and hear what those folks are talking about. 24 hours later. It's been a really interesting morning here so far. So much stuff to see, so many cool demo rooms, a lot of good listening rooms here at Infocom. Uh, the listening rooms are much smaller and a lot of the manufacturers put some soft goods up around because they're really just conference breakout rooms. So I've just been walking around shooting some video and then dropping into those listening rooms uh, to take a listen here and there. So we'll do more of that the rest of the afternoon. A couple of big press conferences coming up here soon. So we'll see what they have to tell us. Other than the scheduled demos, the manufacturers will go out of their way, in my experience, to get you the demo that you want. So if there's something you want to hear or questions you have or some weird context you want to talk about, 
in my experience, just going to a few shows, they will come in early, they will stay late, they will clear the area and make sure that you get or your team gets the demo that you need. So if you're a school or a house of worship, again, or a sound company looking to spend big dollars on a line array or a sound system upgrade or something of that nature, uh, or a big large format console, instead of trying to organize having all of those products coming through your warehouse or your shop or your school, it might be just much easier to go as a group and kind of get some hands on time. The manufacturers will do everything they can, in my experience, uh, to make that worth your while. So that's a really good value if you're actually shopping for something specifically. Uh, those demo rooms, those breakouts, absolute ton of value there. And as well as a freelancer, if you're used to working like I do, where you show up and use whatever gear might be provided by that company or by the rental company that day, uh, being able to get a little bit of exposure to what's happening this season from each manufacturer, even if you just walk around to their trade show booths and talk to their reps or go around to the demo rooms and have a quick chat after or before each uh, demo, if you don't have time to see all of them, uh, can be really valuable just to know what's happening in each line. So you just have that little edge on folks that maybe haven't ever seen uh, the new Meyer stuff before, the new L Acoustics, whatever it is, uh, to be able to at least just get a couple of minutes up close and get the, the key uh, features that they're changing and what's going on and what you should be paying attention to. Hugely valuable for freelancers, companies, and uh, you know people working uh, in formal job settings as well. Just really, really valuable to stay up on the, uh, the latest, even if you don't have a chance to listen critically to everything. Another huge resource that does absolutely make it worth the while to go to these shows are the continuing education seminars, workshops, breakouts that happen at pretty much every show now. And AES obviously is a good example of that. If you only went to the trade show floor and missed out on all the seminars and talks, I think it's actually free to just go to the trade show floor this year. Uh, and then you need the membership, the AES membership or the badge or the passes to get into the seminars and talks because that's really where the good stuff's happening. And back at NAM, you might have seen some footage in previous videos where I got to go and listen to Dave Ratt and some of the reps from uh, PowerSoft talking about some projects they're working on together. And you get to sit in a room with there's about 20 other people there for that one and hear uh, the people that you follow all year long in the industry uh, talk about what they're into and what they're studying and what they're working on, what they're trying to figure out. And that's just hugely valuable. You really can't get that any other way. There's stuff that gets said in those seminars and breakouts that uh, people obviously wouldn't say uh, necessarily publicly as their company. And they're able to talk a little more freely with the smaller audience and give you real answers to questions um, and not just uh, the, the prepared answers and that kind of thing. So those opportunities to learn from people working in the industry firsthand, to get to know them. If you just go and attend those seminars and take a few Few minutes to talk to people before and a few minutes afterwards to talk to the lecturer or whoever else is involved in giving that class you will extend your network of people that you know in this industry uh, just dramatically in a single show just in a week you will meet so many like-minded people just in the hallways at the coffee uh, stand near the seminars waiting for things to start and afterwards talking about what got said and things like that. You will have a blast. You will meet people that are way beyond where you are in the industry and people that are just getting started that maybe you can help out. All different levels. You don't have to be at the top of the industry to attend or uh, to participate in a lot of these uh, seminars and things. They really are open to everybody and you will extend your network really quickly. So if you're new to the area, new to the business, new to any part of the industry that you want to get more involved in, go and meet folks folks in real life. It's really worth the investment. It's worth spending a little extra time and money, and I think you'll get a lot out of it. I gotta go catch a shuttle bus. We're here in Orlando at the convention center. This place is ridiculously big. This is the West Convention Hall that we're in right now. Let me hold it up. So I'm up on the third floor just recording this real quick. Everybody else is downstairs down there. Uh, trying to get on shuttle buses right now. So the shuttle bus scene is hectic here. You gotta be early, you gotta be patient, and you gotta be uh, ready to wait around for a couple minutes as they drive you around to all the other hotels 
uh, before you get to your one. There are like three more convention halls that I haven't even gone into. They're in you know, digital signage, video switchers, uh, they're showing off trucks. They got a Dodge ProMaster. I've spent all day today just in the audio section, which is just underneath me. I haven't even eaten. I've had like a blueberry muffin all day. I gotta go eat. Starting to feel a little funny. So let's get the heck out of here and go edit some videos. I'll see you soon. Thanks for hanging out. So that's it for this time. I hope to see everybody watching here that can make it to the NAMM show in January. We are going to be there with Pro Soundweb again in the speaker showcase uh, demo area, which is like a little arena if it's the same place as last year. And I hope everybody comes by. I got to meet up with so many folks at NAMM last year and Infocom, and I hope to do that at every show we go to uh, in the future. So. Get out there, get your tickets, get some passes. There's so many resources online leading up to these shows, manufacturers and magazines and all sorts of other places that give away passes. Um, you can definitely save money and then get deals on lodging and everything else. And maybe group up with some people, some friends and split the costs uh, as well could be a good idea. So I hope to see you out there. Hope to see you in California in January. That's it for this time.